this computer. So, um, okay, I guess I, uh, what I try to do today is I, oops, oops, keep passing something and call it. So, um, we'll talk about Fourier transform. I know like, uh, many of you like, uh, have done that before, but I guess I, I will give probably a little bit different perspective, like, and, uh, uh hopefully it will be a useful like, vision for you guys. Um, so, but maybe like just get, um, started again like, with the pictures. So, why would I salt over the likes of him? Okay. Okay. Some of you guys, like, because your mic was not. So okay, so um, basically, like for any signal here, I just have a square wave. Like you can always decompose, uh, any signal into sinusoidal, uh, components, and uh, when 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 you add the back, the weight for this uh, weight the sum of the sinusoidal components will be, will be the Fourier transform. So um, to get a little bit detail like into like the Fourier transform, of course we need to get a little bit math, but um, it would be nice math. And uh, also like it won't be very tedious, but it, it probably will give you a bigger picture that like in general, like what is a transform? I mean, transform itself is, um, it's actually it's a project. Um, as you say, like a change of the frame of reference, like you we will change your view from one coordinate system to another view of coordinate systems. Um, I, I will elaborate on that. But before that, like I would just give a really short review of compass number because I, I don't know how uh, you guys are kind of like familiar or what's T with compass number. And uh, of course, I, all of you are supposed to know that because I remember like last time I gave a poll that like uh, all of you, almost all of, yeah, basically all of you have uh, uh, some exposure of com uh, Fourier transform before. And of course, Fourier tran transform is a compass transform. And um, so, but uh, okay, let's do it anyway. So I have like basically any uh, compass number can be considered as a point in the plane way right, on a 2D plane. And uh, I, I sketched something like that, but like, let's say I, oops, I guess I got to, to use this, like, so I, I have uh, any points here that X and Y, right? So it can map to a compass number like X plus, let's say I use J this time, J, Y. So I don't know which, to which one you are more comfortable, like J or I. So in any case, J is equal to I is equal to square root of minus one. So it's an imaginary number. So then like on the X axis here, uh, Y is equal to zero. So X axis is basically all the real numbers. It's all the real numbers lie on the X axis. And on the Y axis lie all the like pure imaginary number. So basically the, all those say like, J, J, Y things or like JW thing, like, but where W is a, a real number. So, and we, we can have a polar representation of this X plus JY. So I can write like X plus JY as like X squared plus Y squared. I put the long like X over X squared plus Y squared plus Y over X squared plus y squared j. So with trigonometry, we know that this, this basically, this is actually a cosine theta and sine theta, where the theta here is basically, hopefully I can draw a straight line, not straight. Let's try again. Okay, pretty straight. Uh, this is a theta here. Okay, so, um, so therefore, like I can always represent with this R uh, cosine theta, cosine theta plus sine theta j, and with this kind of like Euler equation, with the Euler identity, something like this is also equal to e j theta, or e j theta, right? Um, okay, just check your back one, and like you are following me here. 
So what what is uh, e j pi? So this is a quick question here. What is e j pi? Wow, no, no one is here. Uh, anyone? Uh, everyone just signed up, didn't? Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I see that you 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 got. Uh, I I don't already know that. I guess I most likely already know that. If you don't, you you don't. But if you are just following me, uh dj pi will be like when r is equal to one way right? r equal to one here and it's just like cosine theta per sine theta j right uh sine theta if you know some trigonometry like cosine theta uh cosine pi now theta is pi right theta is pi cosine pi is just minus one sine pi is just equal to zero so it's just minus one okay this is a quick review of compass number now let's go to a general transform. Like I, I just give a very simple example here. So what was a really a transform? A transform is really change of reference. So I have, let's say I start with, actually this transform, the example I'm explaining is useful in the future also because this also explains like what's the, uh, how, why I have a change of coordinate uh, in, in this mathematical way when I do a rotation by a certain degree of the axis. So let's say that basically is useful like in comparison as well. If you have an image here, if you rotate by like theta degrees, like what, how does it change, let's say. Now I have a, again, I have some point here, X and Y here. Now I, I change this coordinate, let's say like by this theta. Now this is by theta here, right? Now, in the new coordinate, like I, I have, uh, let's say I have a new coordinate x, x hat and y hat. Oh, actually, it's, maybe it's better to use like x, x1, y1, oh, sorry, x1, x2 as the original coordinate, and then change to like x1 hat and y, uh, x2 hat, let's say. So I like to use this because like later on we will just extend to like high dimensions. Say like here we just look at two D, right? But if you have like n dimensional coordinate x one up to like x n, and then you change to like x one hat to x n hat, will be the same thing. So in this case, actually, I can have a fully transform. Actually, I can have fully transform. It's just change of coordinate. You see, like it's just change in a uh, in different. I mean, like in x actually basically the same way. So, okay, but let, let's back to this like simple like 2D example here. So I have this simple 2D example. I have the axis here, like the original axis is like basically is like uh, 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 one seal and seal one, right? This is the original axis. And then the new axis, like, let's say I have like uh, V1 and V2 here is the new axis here. Now, I, I, what was this new X1 hat and X2 hat? It, I, I would say like, I can basically, this X1 hat and X2 hat should be something like, I have like X, let's say I call this thing X here, like as a vector X here. Uh, maybe, maybe don't call it X because I, yeah, it's okay, call it X. Yeah, I, I think you guys won't confuse. So this vector X here, I can decompose into this uh, V1 and V2 here. So into this V1, let me use a different color, decompose into like V1 and V2, linear combination of V1 and V2 here. So I have like X is equal to, let's say V1 plus V2. And what, what are the, these coefficients? So the coefficient is basically this coordinate, right? This new coordinate should be equal to x1 hat, x2 hat here. Th this is basically like x is this x1 and x2 is 
actually you can see it's just uh, when I do a transform, it's like it's actually just um, change the just have like the original coordinate into the new coordinates will be the transform itself. So uh, now the question is like, what is X1 hat and X2 hat? So the thing is that I, we, we will just assume the one kind of like simplest transform that is we call this orthogonal transform here. And actually Fourier transform is also orthogonal transform. It's a kind of orthogonal transform. So orthogonal transform meaning exactly what I'm showing here. The new coordinate system, the, the, the di the direction of this axis here will all be overgrown to one another. So if I project to something like this instead, for example, if I the original axis, I don't know, I cannot draw straight, I'm sorry. So let's say if I have this, okay, maybe I just copy, it will be easier maybe, well, maybe not, I, I don't know. Let's see if I can copy this. So I, I can maybe erase some of this thing here. Oops, it's not doing well actually. Uh, so if my new coordinate uh, system that the axis are not orthogonal to one another or not perpendicular, like, like this, it doesn't have a wide right angle, then I, this, is, this, does, this does not uh, help. Like, I mean, this, this does not hold for what I'm discussing afterward. So, I'm assuming that these are all perpendicular, the axis. So, and also I can assume that this V1, V2 are all kind of normalized. So therefore I, I will have like uh, V1, VI, VJ basically, if I consider the inner product will be simply equal to Delta IJ. So, um, okay, for you guys, if you don't remember what is inner product is like, also have this where right? you used to have C that before. So it's the norm of V and the norm of J and then multiply by cosine theta where this theta is like the angle between these two factor here. So this is VI, this is VJ, right? So therefore like if, if I have, uh, let's say VI, let's say V1 and V2, I is not equal to J, V1 and V2, this is equal to zero so that means this guy is equal to zero that I have. I, I have to have like cosine theta is equal to zero. So in other words, I should have 90 degrees here. So therefore it's perpendicular or orthogonal. So, um, and now back, back to here, then if I have this assumption here, so I, I can easily get this X, X1, X2, and or Xi, X-ray, like this X1 hat and X2 hat, because I, I can, for example, like I can take, for example, if I want to know what is X, uh, I hat, I know that this is equal to like, this is X1, uh, B1, here plus blah blah blah. I have some x i v i here, and I have more probably. But now, if I take an inner product of like the both side, uh, with v j here, or sorry, v i here, so I have x v i here. I because inner product is a like linear, right? So I can get into each of this term here. I, I have like X1, V1, VI, plus blah, 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 lots of stuff. Oh, maybe I'll write one more term. X2, V2, VI, and so on, and XI, VI, VI, right? And then I have more terms here. And know that because I have like this one, right? When I is not equal to J, uh, V i v j it would be just equal to zero the inner product so all of the terms except one here will be long zero right and this one will be just equal to one basically this will be just equal to one so therefore like x i hat here is simply the projection of x to v i so 
um, so therefore like basically we will have just uh, the transform here, the transform I have uh, basically, let's see. Maybe I will copy somewhere like from what I have already written. Oops, uh, I guess. Oops. Oh, uh, you don't know what I'm doing, but I, I just cannot. Okay, here, yeah, I got it. So, um, so this is just a summarizing of what we just mentioned here so i i can i can write this like this way so i have uh this would be like actually this is have like x1 i use x1 x2 instead so uh i can have the transform from x uh, actually this is not helping because i try use a different notation now X1, when I do a transform X1, X2 to X1 hat, X2 hat, each of these guys is just the projection to my new assets, like uh, V1, X1, V1, and this is just projection to X2, V2. Now, when I get it back, it will be just, I get back like X1, X2, this X1, X2, X equal to X1, X2 here is just equal to my X1 hat, my V1, uh, okay, I just write V1 plus X2 hat, V2. So uh, hopefully you, you, uh, you are following what I'm doing here. So let's just give a very quick, small numerical example. I'm, also give you to try out so make sure you're following me so let's say my i have like the original coordinate is like uh two one or two you can think of like this is like oh actually the point here will be like one two the location is like one two now i i have the new axis here is maybe just just this direction here is uh I have V1 is equal to one one and V2 is like one minus one or like minus one one. So I want to make it a uh, normalized. So maybe I over square width of two here. So I will have like V1, V1, the inner part is V1, V2, V2 is equal to one here. Now, what, what is the new coordinate here? So what is, what is one, two, uh, plus is equal to x1 hat, one, one. This is my v1, my basically this is my v1, but x2 hat. I have minus one one here. Let's see, this is my v two. So, the question is say, like, what is x one hat and x two hat? Or maybe just take one of them. Like, we'll, we'll, I guess probably will, is enough to test your understanding. What is x one hat?
Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I I think like some some. Oh. Uh, uh. Wait. Uh. My my coordinate here was one two here. So. This is square root of one. This is a square root of one half. So this is v1, basically, right? this this one is v1. I just put it here. So maybe I should put a transpose here, even if, if to be kind of a little bit more rigorous. Um, Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think I, I probably get like uh, most of you guys lost, but I don't know where I I I, I get you guys lost. So um, uh, so uh, I guess I maybe get back to the original picture here. So when when we when we have this new coordinate, so we, what we are trying to do, like again, what we're trying to, to do, a transform, or like you, you think of like here, not, not even a transform. Okay, I, I just have like start with like some coordinate x, y. Now this is a x, y in the original Euclidean coordinate system. I have this axis, x is a horizontal and the y axis is vertical. Now, and now I, I changed the, my, Coordinate. I, I, you can think of like, okay, I have this original picture here, right? So it's a like like this here. Now I change this this object or object like rotated by like theta degree, let's say, at the origin. So uh, okay, and my drawing is horrible. Let me let me try again. So I have like original like this is a. An object here now. I try to rotate that. Oh, if I don't know if I can rotate, it, probably I cannot. Uh, I, I don't think there's an option for rotation here in Suno. So, but anyway, so I hope you see my point. Then I, I rotate it. Rotate it by like some degrees here. Let's say I have this pink one, it's a like after rotation, right? But to rotate, I need to know the coordinate, right? I need to know what is the coordinate this, for this point here, right? Then the new coordinate is the um, the x1 and x2. Basically, maybe I change this one here. We move here. Okay, maybe I can zoom in, right? That will help. Uh, then use a new page. And then maybe zoom bigger. Wow, oh, this is big. And then like the original coordinate is x one x one x two. And now after I change this coordinate here, I I. I rotate the picture, then have the coordinates x1 hat and x2 hat. Now, th this is basically, it's not, uh, it's just a trigonometry. So how, how, how do I do the rotation? Now I, I tell you that basically my new axis here, that V1 is a uh, square root of two, one and one here. And this V2 here is a square root of two minus one and one here. So it's actually, you see like it's actually exactly rotated by 45 degrees. Uh, and um, and I started with a, a pawn is a, I say it's uh, one, two, a right? one, two. Now I should change to X1 hat and X2 hat, right? So what, what is X1 hat? Basically the question is,
So from, from our discussion earlier, X1 hat and X2 hat is simply equal to the projection. Actually, you can even see it here. X1 hat actually is basically just the projection of this vector to V1, right? So it's just a projection to V1. So therefore it's actually is X1 hat is just equal to X1 project to V1. Um, or oh, actually in general will be like uh, X1 V1 uh, over the norm of V1, but because V1 is all already normalized, so I don't need to to have the denominator here. So x hat one, so x hat one is what? x hat one, uh, yeah, of course, x, x hat one is scalar. First of all, x hat one is scalar, right? I have the entire, uh, entire vector will compose of x1 hat and x2 hat, but here, let, let's just focus on x1 hat, just make sure that we are on the same page. So x1 hat will be just a projection to v1 or the inner product. Oh, okay, I'm not sure like where, where I look, is, is that like, uh, is that the inner product like, uh, so when, when we do the inner product, like it's just, uh, you have two vectors, the inner product is just, uh, just as what we did in filter like previously, it's just like we have the element wise product of, I mean, product of like all the elements and then sum together. So for example, in, in general, if I have two vector, I do an inner product, it's just equal to X I Y I sum over I, yeah, that. The question is again, like you have the original coordinate of a pawn, like I have one, two here. So you have a pawn, let me see if I can, I have a pawn here, one, two here, the original pawn, the coordinate is one, two. Now, if I rotated my axis by 45 degrees like here, so what is the coordinate in the new something? The new coordinate will be like x1 hat and x2 hat. Now the question is like, what is x1 hat? And I, 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 I uh, again, like from our discussion earlier, actually, this like x1 hat will be just equal to the original x here, like this x here, and project to b1 here. And we say like v1 is square root of 2, 1, and 1. And uh, this inner product is just this way. So if you, okay, maybe I, uh, yeah, let, let me just, just, okay. I guess I, someone probably get it. So now I have one, two, right? So I have basically is equal to, uh, if I do an inner product, if this guy is what, it's like one, uh, one, two, in the portal with this guy will be something like one, one. This is a, a matrix multiplication, maybe. Maybe I just write like this. So I have this row vector multiplied by this column vector here. So it's equal to uh, this element times this element plus this element times this element, and then over square root of two. 
So therefore, your base is equal to uh, phi over square root of two a. So okay, I guess I some of you guys got it. So, I, I, let let me give a very simple question. I just make sure that you guys. I, I have a feeling that like you guys don't know what's in the portal, so maybe that's the problem. So let's say like I have a vector like uh, one, two, one, uh, and like uh, uh, phi one, one. What's the inner portal of these two vectors? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I guess I, yes. Yes, okay, 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 okay. I, I guess I, most of you know what's in the product. So, and, and as I mentioned previously, like that's a geometrical meaning of this inner product, right? This is actually basically, if I have this is a, the first factor is a, a, the second factor is B, then this is actually the long A times long B. Times uh, cosine the angle between like maybe I uh, angle between like A and B. Right. So therefore, like when your inner product is equal to zero, basically you have the two vectors are orthogonal, are uh, perpendicular. So I hope that like uh at least some of you get this. So is that like when whenever we have a transform, what we're doing is like Basically, we just like, look at a different frame of reference and the coordinate of the transform, for example, like in general, I have a uh, the, the axis of the new frame of reference is basically just the basis. So, and, um, and the coefficient for the corresponding direction or corresponding axis there is just the inner product of the or the projection of the um, original input to that axis. So now if you have this picture, like geometric picture, then the free transform is very simple. It's just like you extend to high dimensions. Here I, I cons consider discrete free transform. I have like, let's say uh, my signal is like maybe just have, um, let's say 64. Uh, a length of 64 and I can form basis of like sinusoidal. So first I, I, I can have like a DC component. Let's say I, I can have, maybe I call it 64 is N here. So I can generate different sinusoidal signal here using this EJ Feature things, right? Because I uh, you you remember this EJ feature is actually cosine feature plus J psi feature. So both of these kinds of sinusoidal and so EJ feature is something sinusoidal. Now more precisely, I can have like uh the first signal can be like EJ uh two pi zero over n times zero, so it, it looks funny, but ej two pi zero over n, if I emphasize this zero, zero here like is the frequency. And this is a zero, this is one here, and then I like ej two pi uh, over n, the same thing, but I have like, this is the frequency of zero, and then this, let's say this is two here and so on. So of course like this thing is a like tough dummy factor. This is just like equal to uh, one, 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 one here, right? But I can increase this frequency. This is like for frequency, like uh, for this, um, let's say I have uh, this user, I call this K here, let's say k is equal to zero. Now I can have like k equal to one. Maybe it's easier for me to copy the same thing. Maybe copy, oops, oops, oops. Copy several times. Oh, 
Oops. So I have like frequency K is equal to one now. So if like this is one, then it no longer be all constant, right? So this signal at the beginning will be all one like this, right? Here I just showing the magnitude because I, of course this is a compass number. Let's say I, I'm just, just showing uh, this, um, I have each of this value here. Let's say uh, I call it, uh, uh, let's see. I, I think like I give a name for that. I, I, okay, I can call it V also. So this is a V zero, let's say V zero. Uh, yeah, this, let me, I just call it V zero. So the entire vector is V zero basically. So it'd be like V zero and then just, um, uh, we still n. Okay, maybe I I I I guess the more I write, maybe it just get more confusing. Let, let's just show it. I, I'm just so showing the magnitude here. So like for this guy, like I have the k is equal to one now. It becomes something sinusoidal. Eh? So it'll be more or less the long. I guess. Uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, yeah, we'll be uh, starting. Uh, yeah, I, I okay. I just sketch it. Like probably I'm not exactly correct, but probably it's it's okay. Maybe maybe like this. So and, and then I now I have like k equal to two. Let's say I change this to the second frequency here. K equal to two. I just have like, like last time have a signal that have like, and uh, have like high frequency or like you can uh, have more cycles packed into uh, the signal of length n. And know that like, I have, let's say I call this a uh, V0 right? and V1 and this V2 and so on. So you can easily visualize that like V, this say like VJ and VK, they're orthogonal to one another. Actually the inner product is equal to zero when J uh, or like, or maybe I just, oh yeah, it's okay. Let me do it like that. When J is not equal to K because like when J not equal to K, what, what do I have? I have the inner product of them will be e j two pi. Okay, I I probably overuse this j here. Maybe like uh, k one and k two. When k one is not equal to k two. K one. K two. K one not equal to k two. So I will have e j2, so this is a like k1 over n. Okay, I missed some tiny detail for inner product for compass number, but you should kind of know that for, for compass number because for, for inner product, what, what we like to define is like, we want to make sure that like, I have like um, inner product of a and a should be some real number right? because it correspond to the norm, it should be correspond to the Lom of the vector, right? So therefore, like if you have the, you consider the vector can be compass, then you should, uh, the inner product of A and A should be defined as say, first say one side has to be a compact conjugate times A, something like this. So, okay, don't worry about that if you don't follow my, my detail here, but I just, because this is a path, um, cross listing. So uh, I think some graduates, uh, yeah, I want to entertain some graduate students as well. So so this one, um, so then like the inner part of this guy here, so know that because of that, I should have like one of this guy, K1 have like a compass conjugate of this guy. So we have a minus sign here. 
times c minus j, I have n here, sum over n, n equal to one as a big n here, or the n still a minus one here, and e j two pi k two, okay, this does not have minus sign, n over n, right? So then this will be equal to some n equal to zero, big n minus one, e j two pi k two minus k one, of n n, so it would be like some k k two minus k one. This would be some integer, right? So, so this would be integer. So this would be like one of this sinusoidal signal here, right? But this sinusoidal signal, actually, I didn't draw it well. This should be should have zero mean because I actually I should put it here. Um, so it should the real component. Oh, sorry, like for um for example, like for uh for when when uh yeah one k two minus k one is equal to one. So this part will exactly cancel with this part, right? So therefore, like when when this one is integer, this is always equal to zero. So that means that like okay, when k one is not equal to k two, so I should have like this guy should be uh the this wave here should be perpendicular to one another so the, the inner product should be equal to zero and um and on the other hand uh when i have like k1 is equal to k2 or like simply white k here bkk here so what i get here this k1 equal to k2 i will get zero here right so i will just get like n equal to zero to m minus one and all of this term will be just equal to one so this will be just equal to m A power of i that is a square root. Okay. Um. Uh, both. Uh. Okay. J here is equal to square root of minus one. Yeah. J is a uh, equal. Uh. Yeah. This. This is a, a notation. A. Uh. People in. Oh uh, yeah. This is a private message. Someone asked, "Hey, uh, what is J? J is a square root of minus one. Uh, because, the. <clears throat> um. That the. Basically, the background of like many engineer use like because I, like, uh, old school engineers do currents a lot and they use like I for currents, so they want to reserve I for currents and therefore use J for the imaginary number. So okay, anyway, so what I mean is I like, okay if you you don't exactly follow this one here, don't worry about that. I just want to say that like. Basically, <clears> the <throat> same principle as what we had before the, our discussion before. All this V here in free transfer are sinusoidal and they are orthogonal to one another. So therefore your free transfer is like, it's just projection to all of them, each of them. So it's just doing in the product with each of these guys. So therefore like you remember like what is free transfer? The free transfer is like, if you remember, like I have xn is the original signal, like let's say, and the Fourier transform is a projection. Imaginary power of a, oh, okay, this will get back to really, really basic thing. Uh, so you you say like what's well, dj? Okay, if for example like dj theta will be something like this. This is a theta that we we mentioned at the beginning. So this is one dj theta exactly mean this. So it be like cosine theta plus j sine theta. Yes. So um now okay after all this, so I mean like I have let's say have a signal here like x x zero up to x n minus one, right? This is like the original coordinate, like a factor here, 
là transform to x zero hat to x m minus one hat x hat m minus one. So that would be just projection like to uh, this this x one hat basically will be just projection to the DC component, right? So or like in general, let me just go in general. I have like x uh, k hat. So it's just the projection to the k sinusoidal wave. The k sinusoidal wave is like E, uh, let me, do I still have that? Let's see. Yeah, I still have that, that's nice. Will be just this guy when, when this frequency is k, right? And of course, like, this is not normalized. Uh, we we know that okay, this uh, for this vector here, like for each of them, when they, uh, I I have inner part of this guy to itself. I just show that this should be equal to uh, n, right? So if I want to normalize that, I can put a square root of n here, one over square root of n. So then, like this one here, actually this one here. So therefore, it's just equal to this guy. It's just this guy, the inner part of this guy, x0, is n minus one, right? And this is exactly kind of the formula you have when you are in, when I, I be, believe that like when you learn, first time you learn Fourier transform. Actually, like this, are in this are in the part of actually, I, I I should have a complex conjugate here, so that's fine. Um, K over n n, yes. So it, it is a little bit long story. Get back to this equation here, but I I want to uh, kind of um, Give you a bigger picture, like in general, what is transform, and also like some of the material will be useful. For example, when we mentioned the earlier transform for rotation, that is actually relevant in computation as well. But uh, uh, so hopefully, at least some of you guys get it. I don't, I, I don't know how 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 much uh, my uh, this part um, you kind of like is so able to uh, follow this. So, um, and of course, it's then the, the inverse transform is basically the project back. Like, so I have for each of these coordinates here, xk, that way it's weighted sum of the sinusoidal wave, right? And the sinusoidal wave here. Or maybe, maybe I write like this, maybe equal to I probably still have this, yeah, nice. Will be equal to weight the sum of this kind of sort of wave, right? So I have sum over, and also like this should be over square root of n. So n equal to zero to n minus one. Oh, sorry, not n now. I am sum over the all this wave. So I sum over k here. K equal to zero, and n minus one, and uh, x hat k. That's basically will give me back the x here. Um. Or like so, therefore, like or like x n is equal to k equal to zero n minus one x k e j two pi k n over n uh, square root of n. Ah, uh, 
for some of you guys, I, I guess I in uh, in many first course in uh, free transform, like typically we will uh, just say move the square root of n group on one side. So it's okay to do that because it's just a normalization factor. So you can, for example, let's say I can for the forward transform, I, I, I don't have like one over square root of n, but then I in the inverse transform, I just put like that scaling factor back here. So I have like one over n here instead of, so this probably like, this is the one you see like for Fourier transform, like in the past, I guess. Um, so, uh, okay, I, 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 uh, I guess I, I just want to have you guys keep this picture in mind. I guess I, this is kind of useful. Think of like what you are doing, like when to transform, it's just doing projection. Be because I, th this is like kind of very powerful. When you have this picture, like immediately you, if you remember that like you learn fully transform, you also heard of like this, for example, like um, uh, possible uh, identity, right? So it's kind of like saying that the energy uh, of the in the transform domain is the same as the energy in the in the original domain. So basically, have something like s hat k square and sum over uh, sum over k. So this will be kind of equal to or like at least proportional to depends on like how, whether I use a like square root of n. So if I use one over n, of course it won't be equal. But if I use a like square root of n here on both sides, so it'd be exactly equal to, uh, I have this possible in identity simply because what I'm doing this transform is just doing rotation. I'm doing nothing, right? If I do in rotation, it won't ch change the norm of this signal here. So therefore, like I immediately, this picture will give you the possible in that identity and without any deviation. So, okay, I, I guess I will just stop with like the kind of more uh, mathematical stuff and get back to slides, right? So uh, unless any of you have questions, so let me just move your chat box to here. So, okay, this first couple of slides just, okay, I guess I can skip it now. So, but, okay. Now, when we do images, um, we have like two S's, right? So I can have a fully transform like on both sides. Basically I can, I can have like uh, decompose my signal first like in one direction and to decompose in another direction. And then I can talk about like the frequency. The, again, the frequency you can think of like how, how many cycles in that direction. For example, in, in here, um, I have um, this signal here, you can see like it correspond to feed dots here because like, there's a DC component that's correspond to the central dot here. That's uh, and that's the constant constant signal. And also like there's a sinusoidal signal or the horizontal side, right? You, you are kind of varying in the horizontal direction. But that's, if I, I have like more variation like on the horizontal side, then I, I will be like, or like I should say like, if I also have a signal oscillate faster in the horizontal direction, then I will have the dot moving more like towards uh, the, like the, the, yeah, both, I, mean, I, will, I, will, I will should say that it will have these two dots and move away from the origin, right? Or actually I can also have like something like uh, sinusoidal, like in the, I, I mean, oscillating in the uh, diagonal direction or like not uh, perpendicular or not horizontal or vertical but in the diagonal side or like any angle basically, that will correspond to like, I will have some frequency uh, along the direction basically. So I will have like 
some co components here, like this dot here, correspond to this direction is pointing to this direction is going to have variation. Um, and this this is just a, a bit more variation. But so with this point here, for example, I have the linear combination of this guy, right? So I have this one here at this one. So therefore I have this path pattern here. So, and this are the three bases. Uh, actually, we show the 1D cases, right? So in the 2D case, it will be the same thing, right? So I, I got, go along, for example, here, I only have uh, vertically get kind of like increasing frequency or like increasing like the oscillation. Uh, and this one, I only go like uh, increasing oscillation in the horizontal direction. And this I can go both ways. So I can, for example, oscillate a little bit in the horizontal direction. And then I go like here, like oscillate more in the vertical direction. So know that like I'm showing like two slides here, I'm oh, sorry, like both blue and green patch here, patches here, because I, uh, the Fourier transform after all is like a complex transform, right? So I, I have the real and imaginary component. I'm so here is showing like the blue one, the green one. Okay, simple question, which one is real, which one is imaginary? Uh, okay, let's just ask which one is real. Yeah, I, because I, I asked two things. So, which, uh, repeat the, uh, like, let me start again. Which one is the real one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, green is real because here it's written here. Like the cosine component is real. Yes. So, uh, And uh, here's more example. Okay, let, 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 let me uh, let me have some fun here. Uh, just wait a sec, I need to find my coerced that. Uh, Okay, let's see if I'm running okay. Okay, I guess it's running okay. So uh, let's see here. So I, I'm only showing the magnitude here. So, and uh, oh, I'm, my hand is shaking. So you can kind of see that if I rotate a bit, so you see like, if I rotate like this, like this, this angle, like this is exactly following this axis, right? So I have like bigger kind of high frequency component in this direction now because of like all these edges, actually maybe not just this edge. So this edge actually contribute quite a bit of like, uh, high frequency component because like this transition here is a high frequency, right? I have like suddenly black to white will be high frequency. So, oh, my laptop is so dirty, uh, you see that. So, and um, and uh, yeah, okay, that that's, I guess you, you get, get that. So maybe just quit here. Um, and maybe, okay, just, uh, also like a, a quick track. I, I won't ask like each of all of them. So maybe I just E for E, this is a, a match kind of like, uh, what's that called? I just uh, have one and um, one to one correspondence of like this upper row and the lower row here. So for E, like which one is E you think? Like which one is most likely to be E?
Yeah, you want to match the number with the letter. Just, just E here. Like we translate E, E. Yeah. So actually, we can think of like we uh, uh, the easier one that uh, to pair with this guy. So let's say the easier one will be, you see, like this one and D is like okay, uh, is uh, yeah, they they will be like an easy match here. Like so, I have a symmetry like along all the directions. So this expect a symmetry along all the directions as well. And for A here is a is a mm -hmm. very easy match right, with. This D also, uh, relatively, because uh, you see there's actually no DC component along this vertical uh, horizontal direction here. I see. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's actually hard to say. Like that here, I cannot say whether it's no DC because I, okay, um, yeah, but this this one is actually like 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 I guess like because you have two parts here, uh. And along this direction, yeah, okay, okay. Let, let, let me say, okay. And then like this one will be reasonably C and five reasonably like reasonable because like, you have this a little bit too the like uh, horizontal uh, edge here, right? So will correspond to a little bit too the for this one. So B and C. Actually, C and this one, C and five is like only this one have a tilde, right? Tilde, like I, I think, like for image processing class, they will ask similar question as well. I see Joe Bob's uh, test also, so uh, like this would be useful if you take image processing. So and um, so yeah, two and four is a good guess, like uh, actually, but uh, E probably have like more kind of like vertical high frequency component than like B because you see like you have the loss of this horizontal line here, right? Or like horizontal half. So therefore like I would guess four actually basically. Uh, so yeah. And uh, then like B will be two actually. So um, this just go back like we discussed earlier. So the free transform have like both uh, have two components, right? So therefore we can only also, we, we focus on the uh, amplitude there, but we can also look at the phase, right? And uh, the phase, actually phase is quite, uh, huh, this this case maybe a little bit fun. Maybe I just show this one here. So I have this, um, uh, this amplitude picture and phase picture, and for also the zebra here, the amplitude and phase picture. Now, I, I'm in mix, like, Makes in the sense I, uh, let's see, I, I don't know what I'm showing here. I think it's like, I'm showing like um, a picture with like uh, a zebra face and uh, what's that, leper uh, amplitude? Uh, or oh, actually cheater, this one is cheater, I guess I, um, so, uh, wait, I, I don't want to, oh, oops, oops, I showed that. So it's okay, I showed that. Yeah, so, uh, so this, okay, this on the, on the left here, I, I, I originally wanted you guys to guess. I, so one is like, I have like showing, uh, mixing the one image of the face with the image of amplitude. The other one is like, just, uh, just the other way around, just vice versa. And uh, on the left is actually, I have the zebra face, but the cheetah amplitude. And this one is I have the cheetah face and the, the zebra amplitude. So it looks like the face is actually more important to get the image, like what we see. So I changed the amplitude. Like, so this, this is like quite, um, quite interesting. I, I, I don't think like I, I, I would uh, know that beforehand, like without doing the experiment. So uh, when you mix that, that's totally possible that this will look like a cheater instead of a zebra, right? But it turns out the phase in this case is more important than the amplitude. 
um, and uh, and uh, so he uh, and also like a remark here like actually for lateral images, typically they are very similar in the sense that like have more low frequency components. So that's like if you think of like decomposing to like free transform, like you have some oscillation and some log. Um, <clears throat> and um, oscillating component and log oscillating component. The oscillating component is less, even though you have like edges. But if you kind of like remove this high frequency component, it doesn't look too bad typically, but if you remove the low frequency component, it becomes very bad. And um, I'm also like just mentioned earlier, like actually the most information is actually carried in the phase. It's not carried in the amplitude. This is kind of interesting because I, um, I didn't have a slide here. It turns out like for music, for example, like uh, for song, we, we don't care about phase. We, we, don't, we cannot hear phase. We care about the frequency. So we can care about the amplitude of the frequency. So we care like exactly when you're speaking, uh, like what frequency you're mixing, what kind of frequency components together, but we ignore the phase. So um, it's not exactly how, why we perceive perceive uh, kind of sound and like vision like very differently. So, um, and uh, okay, this is just a filter example. Okay, oh, okay, this, this is a, I, I want to kind of like get back to the last kind of last class that just remind you guys when we and uh, we and we in Fourier transform for Fourier transform we have a special property that like if we do convolution in one domain that we do like previously talking about filtering if we do convolution in the uh, original domain it will correspond in the frequency domain it just multiply the uh, the signal together so for example if I have filter like this like in the Fourier transform uh, wait a sec. Oh uh, yeah, okay. I have filter like this. Okay, this is the filter. If I do a, a filtering of this image, I get an image like this, right? That will correspond to, I can look at the Fourier transform of this filter that would be like this. And I have the signal that have the Fourier transform is like this. So if I multiply them together, literally multiply them together, uh, I get uh, the, this element-wise part, I get this. And that the inverse Fourier transform, I get back this original image. And I can do this editing the frequency, right? For example, I have this image here. So this is kind of idealistic, like, so it looks like you can recover this image if you know exactly what's the noise here. For example, like I have like this noise here at the disk of noise. Uh, with this kind here, if I remove it, I got it a bit better. So, okay, what was that saying here? Uh, yeah, I have this, this one here at this noise here, right? This is that noise here that um, is, have this part here. So if I remove this noise here, just simply remove this component here, I look a little better uh, than for example, like this one. So yeah, more more example, but uh, it's, uh, this is another ideal case. I have this this component here. It's just like remember, like in the begin at the beginning of this slide here, we show this uh, kind of like slowly varying pattern. It's basically corresponds to these two dogs here. So if I remove these two dogs exactly, then it, it looks very nice. So of course, in practice, it typically is not that useful doing this way because we don't know like how how the frequency uh, domain in terms of the frequency representation, how the signal is, how the image is co-opted. So, but this is a kind of nice example. Um, <clears throat> so uh, maybe just as an illustration of using like free transform, like just use the old JPEG, like uh, compression as an example. So as we mentioned like, on one of the slides earlier that high frequency components is less useful than low frequency components. So if we want to compress an image, 
So what we can do is like we can first do a, here we don't use exactly Fourier transform, we use this uh, DCT. It's like, uh, you can think of like another version of Fourier transform, but like it's uh, just have a real component. So therefore like if you have Fourier transform, you have like two components, right? So therefore for compression, it's not that good. So we'll use a DCT instead. And after the transform, because like, we care about more of the low frequency component, so we will quantize more like, for the high frequency. This is basically the quantization step size. So it's the filter components or the filter trans, oh, sorry, the transform uh, components like this. And I would just say filter more or quantize more like for like high frequency component have like a higher, uh, actually this, this table is interesting also like for like this pretty high frequency has a, is also like increased importance. I don't know how they design it anyway. So, but the general trend is like the higher the frequency, I care less. So have a higher uh, quantization step size. Now, after I quantize that, I have this value. Right? Then I, I will save this value, but I save that in a six set manner. So that, that in the sense that I can stop anytime. I can still like piece up like the more important low frequency component, rather than the high frequency component. And also like we mentioned that like if we, look at in the uh, YUV color space or YCL, CBCL color space, the uh, luminance component is more important than chrominance. So for the chrominance, we will further down sample that before we do this uh, compression. So that, that's basically the final compression is like this. Okay, uh, I, I, I'm, have like two minutes left. I don't know whether. Okay, I guess I I, I can just go quickly with that. Uh, but maybe maybe I do one more demo. Like maybe like instead of doing this here. So let me do one more demo and also like one more question maybe. Um, Oh, by the way, do you guys have question with the homework? Like maybe that, okay, I will do it at the end. So here, I will just have you guess. Like, so this is like, I have this light bar here it's doing transform here. So, uh, so am I doing low pass or high pass? What I'm saying is like, what I'm doing is I, I'm removing, okay, my question is I, I have this image here and I'm removing some component. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit out of time, uh, but last question, I guess I, so my question is I, am I doing low pass or high pass here? So I I am basically, okay, good. So I, I do a Fourier transform. Now I, I'm either removing this, will be low pass, right? That will be low pass. Or if I am doing this, that will be high pass. Yes, I guess I, all of you guys got it. Ah, uh, okay. I'll just say, Actually, I'm now doing one direction is low pass, one direction is high pass. This is another question. The, the, the first question's answer is low pass. So, so which direction I'm doing high pass? Basically, What I'm doing here is like I'm doing one direction is low pass, another direction is high pass, right? So I'm either doing this or doing this. So which one? So which one, like, like high pass, which one is, which direction I'm doing high pass?
Yes, I, I'm doing vertically high pass and horizontally low pass, basically. Okay, but he's still going. And uh, actually, I can change this filter also here, kind of like, uh, yeah. So I, I guess I, okay, okay, I guess I, you, you got to get, get it. So, um, and uh, someone asked me the homework, like maybe, uh, do, do, do you guys have like question for the homework? I can, I can show you a demo of the homework. Uh, maybe here, just before we left. In kind of, in, in, in term, I mean, in case if you guys are. Yeah, I have a question. Um, and I know I talked with you through Discord, but just to clarify, it says that um, you want black and white pixels. Um, but when you convert it to RGB, um, you get like this yellow purple pixel instead. Oh, okay. You, you can change the color map uh, or like if you, you don't, um, um, uh, if you by presenting to like um, both RGB components. So if you want to get, a, get the color to be white, so you need to set the of the components to be like 255. So assuming that like you, your basically the, uh, the input is an integer or, or like you can simply like just take one value, but then like you change the color map into uh, black and white. So that, that will work as well. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this, this should be something that you uh, yeah, you, you get here, of course, I, what, what you can, um, so some of you guys, I uh, also mentioned that this, uh, in the original question, I, 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 I actually just control the hill here. So if you want to also like set a threshold for your um, um, saturation and also the, um, uh, the value, that's fine as well. Yeah. So then you can exclude some uh, values that, for example, this doesn't look like too blue, or maybe like, uh, um, and that that's fine with that, but I only care about the hue. If you want to adjust that for the saturation and the value, that's fine as well. So okay, I, I'm totally over time. So but uh, I I I will see you guys like next week, like in case. Uh, and and I, I guess I like, someone request to extend the homework. Like maybe I, I uh, maybe just try to extend to next Tuesday. I, I will change that to Tuesday. But, but don't, don't wait until Tuesday because I, you will uh, have lots of, uh, because I guess I like, next week also you will have other submission. I forgot like what's that for the project proposal or for, for I forgot like you guys want to check uh, chess uh, campus. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's it, I guess, unless you guys have any other questions. So, and uh, okay, so I'll see you guys uh, next week then. And thank you, Dr. Chen. Yes. Okay, see you guys, thanks.
Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah.